Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Risa, and this is Talent Talk. On today's show, we have acclaimed country singer-songwriter, Kanan Smith. But before we get to our interview with him, you have to check out his hit single, Cabin in the Woods. partner in crime, Risa Binder, for another edition of Talent Talk. And I am so thrilled that today we have the acclaimed country singer-songwriter, Kanan Smith. And K- oh my God, Kanan, you are un believable The audience just got a little sneak peek of your amazing, amazing song, Cabin in the Woods. But before we get to all of that, I know that my better half, Risa Binder, has question numero uno. Oh. Kanan! You're amazing, and you know that I, I feel that way. And I have so many questions, but I think the first one that comes to mind from a songwriter point of view is when you're writing in the writing room, do you know when a song in your heart, do you know when a song is for you or when it's for someone else? And like, what is your process with that? That's a great question. It's so, uh, it's, I think it's seasonal for me. It, it changes depending on where I'm at in my cycle of creativity. Um, mm. And I, that means I go in and out of, periods where I'm looking and thinking what do I want to record next and seasons of where I'm that's on the back burner and I'm just there to write a great song get cuts you know that kind of thing so I I shift back and forth um and it uh I've I've come out of the season um where I'm looking for me and write for me because I'm actually I'm done almost done recording another full-length album uh, for release next year and um uh and i'm in that zone where i'm just trying to write songs for other people and um get on the radio you know that way so yeah it just changes yeah and, and definitely actually um it wasn't always that way either i think um i learned late in the game that sometimes being an artist and a songwriter hurts you as a songwriter in town um mm. Because a lot of times they want to know, as far as co-writing, a lot of times people want to know, well, is he cutting? Is he, is he going, they going to radio? When are they going to radio? What's the plan? Um, and so you kind of can, you know, get in that zone where you almost get overlooked as a serious um, writer only um, in that scenario, because they're trying to cater to what you do as an artist thing. And so sometimes that that's that's hurt me, um, but I'm I'm in a good place now. Where I've learned enough on this side of my career that um, uh, I'm in the in the room to just write a great song and a hit song, hopefully, um, and and getting in the right rooms that I need to be um, taking you know taken seriously as a songwriter. And then all the while, at the end of six months, I'll, I'll look at the stack of songs that haven't been cut yet. And the ones that feel like me, I'll go cut them. So it, it kind of, it wins. I win, I win both ways that way. It's fun. 
And do you feel too, like when you're in the live setting, I just have to ask this um, from maybe a personal standpoint. Last week I did a listening room show and I sang a new song. When a song is new to you that you feel so strongly about, do you still get butterflies or no? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get really, I get really attached emotionally to songs that come from um, a deep place in my heart um, or a memory or something that just strikes a chord with, I've got, I've been through some things in my life that uh, I emotionally react to when the moment's right. So yeah, the, the right song will do that for sure. Well, and on top of that, Kenan, I love the fact that you are so unapologetically not putting yourself into one slot, pigeonholing yourself into one genre because you do it all. And I'm thinking of the young Canons out there who might think, oh my God, I want to play in multiple genres. I want to be the producer of most of my songs and write and perform and co-write. Sometimes just write myself. And the fact that you're just doing it, my friend, makes you, I think, that much more the authentic star that you are. And speaking of all of that coming together, you know, I want to get a little sneak peek about what this album is about uh, that you tease us with, how dare you. But this, <laughs> al this amazing album, High Country Sound, oh my God, Let's just talk about how amazing this is. Not only are the songs freaking in, like, it's, I feel it's just like the, all the colors of this beautiful musical rainbow landscape that is Canaan. But on top of that, you're the sole producer on eight of the 12 tracks, a writer on all of them, co-producer on the rest. I want to know how the concept of the idea of the album came about. And then on top of that, is there one song in particular that like you wrote first that became almost like the North star of everything else? Yeah. Great questions. Um, thank you too, for all the kind words. It means a lot to me, man. Uh, it's cool that the more personal I get somehow, the more it resonates. And um, that's been <clears throat> a journey for me getting to that place of opening it up and telling my story on a personal level. And I'm just in that season of life, I think, where I'm a new dad. You know, I've got a two-year-old daughter. I've got a, another one on the way, a boy coming in February. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. Congratulations. Well, we haven't said much about it yet, but okay. thank you. <laughs> I, I wanted you to. But the whole point being that I think that that's really um, kind of shifted some of the things in my head and in my heart and in my kind of like the trajectory of what, what I what I look at as important priority number one and um you know just done some rearranging in my life on a personal level and across the board and you know on every level and so I've I've sort of gotten to dig deep and and um remember where I came from and in doing that like a coming home in a in a strange way I've come back to the version of myself that moved here 15 years ago 16 years ago from Virginia, um, telling stories on this guitar. Um, and, you know, like this town has been so good to me. And it's also been a town that um, has um, has tripped me up in, um, in my process too, and unknowingly. Um, just sometimes I think you, you, you get hungry for more success and you start just trying to put out what you think will work versus just writing from a place of um, inspiration and, mm -hmm. you know, just what's authentic, I guess. And so this season of my life being a coming home season has allowed me to start telling my stories on a more personal level and bringing in my upbringing and the influences that, that made me who I am and keep me going to this day. And so there's a, there's a lot of home in this record and I wanted it to sound like that too. Um, it does. And I wanted, it, <laughs> thank you. I wanted it to sound like what, what, uh, my life, my lifestyle is, um, and, and where I came from. So that, that meant a lot of, uh, organic, um, down from the mountain kind of, uh, journey. Uh, into Music City, that kind of sound um, that brought me here is what I'm in love with again and kind of just focused on um, doing me, you know? And so the result is is that, and I've got another album that I'm working on now that um, 
is almost in the bag and it's um, kind of an extension of that, that same mentality of just, you know, doing what I do best, whether it's something that's going to um, make me money or not. And I think well, I got sidetracked at one point and we all want to make money and I make money doing it, but I, I'm not driven by the scales of success anymore as they, as you measure them up against numbers and streaming. And no, I, your radio, songs, all I that, yeah, your songs speak to so many people. Um, we just need you Kanan Smith and we are going to ask you so many more questions, but Wait. our very next question we want to ask you is Kanan Smith, are you ready for game time? Always. Game <laughs> Go. Well, Kanan Smith, today is your lucky day because our game today is the questions game. And Risa has our questions book in Nashville. And Risa, take it away. Well, I love this game, Kanan, because we get to know a little bit more about you too. And do you have like a lucky number or a favorite number? What would that be? Uh... <laughs> You know, I guess let's go with 17. That oh. was that was the number in um, in my early life that was important. Okay. Huh. Okay, here's 17. Ready? Um, yeah. You're on a road trip, and the only place to get anything for lunch is at a gas station. So what do you buy? <laughs> uh, it's awesome because this is my real life a lot i know <laughs> well i'm gonna start out i'm gonna make sure i get my favorite flavored and favorite brand sunflower seed if they have if they have uh the bigs sunflower seeds yeah a couple flavors i like i like the hidden valley ranch uh i like the old bay oh i and love I'll, old bay maryland i'm from maryland yes. and i like, and I like <clears throat> bacon as well so I'm going to stock up on sunflower seeds. Uh, I'm always going to get a coffee or something with some caffeine because mm -hmm. life's tiring. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to get uh, probably a greasy slice of pizza if it didn't look like it was made three days ago. Well said. From the little rotisserie tray. <laughs> um, now, if I'm at Bucky's, which is the best stop in America, I would get... Um, like a, a chicken sandwich or something like that. Or they have a brisket sandwich. It's insane. Oh, I didn't know they had a brisket sandwich. Yeah. A really good one too. Yeah. So this is all gas station food. Um, and then I'm, I also, I'm a kind of a sugar junkie and <laughs> I, I grew up crushing Starburst. So I'd probably do something like that. Just for but question. Do you have a certain flavor of Starburst that's your fave? And do you not eat a certain color? Or is it no, I, I love them all um you know how your palate changes too the older you get yeah. like i like yeah. candy too man I'm, i like neko wafers i like boston baked beans i'm like what am, what's wrong <laughs> how old am i so Ooh. now now i'm like i used to be all reds and pinks and now i'm like bring it on i, I like it all we, it looks like we have time to would you mind doing one more magic number we can ask you one more question yeah. is that what other number 42 22 22 oh 22 yes 22 oh these are all food related i'm down with food if you're down with food okay here we go you are opening a restaurant where you are guaranteed to have the world's greatest version of any dish that you choose so what would your specialty be Ooh. holy smokes that's a good question oh wow <laughs> um oh gosh that'd be seasonal for me because i like in the winter time when it's cold i like ramen and things like that like to warm me up um and there's a good place here in nashville for that which one do you like well i mean otak i love pretty. otak <laughs> um and uh and then uh, i i i always i grew up on uh, a lot of italian actually and so mm -hmm. Like an incredible lasagna sounds really good to me. Um, that's all. And I crush tacos too, and a lot of Mexican food. So, yes, the world's best street taco. I feel Where? like I've had. I feel like I've probably had it. 
because I've eaten so much all around the country. Yes. But, but there, yeah, if, you, if I, you could guarantee it was the best taco on the planet. Maybe that's my answer. That's my final answer. The okay, best. I like this final answer. <laughs> Well, Kanan, we're so excited. We wanted to know if we could hear a little bit more of the idea behind or the concept behind your new record. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit of what you can tell us about it? And then when we can hear a little bit from you when, when you think it'll come out. Um, next year. Okay. It'll come out next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, um, it's more stories. Um, that uh, touch on uh, parts of my life and, you know, um, a deeper dive into um, some of the areas that I've always uh, wrestled with. And um, there's a lot of, there's just, uh, there's something for everybody on there again with the feel goods and the tear in your beer kind of songs. Um, but they're definitely, <laughs> They're definitely, they're definitely um, they're, they're my some of my favorite songs yet. So I'm I'm excited yeah. to share. They've got, I think they've got uh, something to say, you know, and hopefully people um, find themselves in. Well, I need I need everybody to go out there that watches Talent Talk and take a listen to in 2022 when you hear Kane and stuff, but also your older stuff too because I literally had to pull over on a road trip when I listened to Bronco and I think I wrote you because I was just so moved you have such a gift and that being said would you mind playing us out with something that you you want to share maybe <laughs> let's do um this is from high country sound this cool. this song in particular is one of those that um I never saw coming but I've been waiting to write my whole my whole journey so far so when we had uh, our first baby we went old school and we decided not to find out the gender and we, no way so we didn't know until she came out and wow we had the name virginia picked out for a girl oh my gosh but <laughs> uh, but we just um we were just blown away, obviously, uh, when we met her. And then the next time I played this song, because I'd written this song just a couple months before she was born as a song to home. Um, and now that we have our baby girl, Virginia, it takes on a whole nother level for me of personal uh, heartstring tugging. So it's called Sweet Virginia. Left Virginia for Tennessee, dream on the day that I turned 18. 81 through the Shenandoah Valley, and me second guessing everything. Should I go? Should I stay? Yeah, you'll be with me either way. Sweet Virginia, you're always on my mind. Sweet Virginia. Go there all the time. They say that you're for love, and I'd have to agree. Cause they ain't never been enough. You ever love me like sweet Jim? You want me to keep going, or is that? Oh my God, can keep you, going. You keep going, please. <laughs> I've been singing songs and every single one of them got a line or two in back. Roots run deep as a dogwood tree, oh, and everything I do may be gone and never fall. Home is always where you are. Sweet Virginia, you're always on my mind. Sweet Virginia, go there all the time. They say that you're from love, and I have to agree. Cause ain't never been enough to ever love me 
like sweet Jesus. And I miss you, summers on the river, mountains in the winter. Leading you has always been better, sweet Jesus. You're always on my mind. Sweet Virginia, I go there all the time. They say that you're beloved, and I'd have to agree. It ain't never been enough. Ever love me like sweet Virginia. Sweet Virginia, oh. wow, amazing. Kanan Smith, ladies and gentlemen, you are an absolute gem of an artist with a capital A, a talent with a capital T, and a gem of a human, dare I say, with a capital H. You are such I'm just like in tears thinking about the fact, and my dogs agree, they are in love with you. This whole notion that you now have this as a song for life for your daughter. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for your time today, Risa, you're the best. And please, Kenan, what is that? This is the coordinate, my wife gave me this for Father's Day last year, and it's the coordinates to our home, okay? And then on the back it says, sweet Virginia, you're always on my mind. I can't. I'm like in tears because, you know, I'm a new parent too. I say I'm a new parent. I have a three year old who I'd love to, for her to have a play date with your two year old. <laughs> or is she too? Let's go. Let's do it. But like, yeah. you, I know exactly what you mean. And I can even see from knowing you, you were one of the first people I met when I moved here, Kanan, like that there's a grounding about you. There's you're very grounded in this 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 fatherhood suits you so beautifully and i'm just so happy for you <laughs> thank you